So I did videos on how to be able to trace things like this logos with the, you know, using the pen tool and then to get it to taper here we'd use, um, like if I go to the pen tool, we have the, under stroke, we have the pressure area where we can make a tape off here and you can watch those videos. I did a video on how to convert pixel based images into vectors but then I had to take that video down because it was issues with the company that the example I was using, the program I was using, it was so expensive and it, it wasn't practical. So I was always looking for an alternative that was going to be close to nothing in cost, uh, preferably zero. Uh, because it's a feature that we don't have in Affinity Designer, I wanted it to be something that is maybe web-based, that is easy and accessible for all to, to get hold of. And I found a program, one of many, but I'm recommending this program because it's, it's got a simple user interface and it just works well. Uh, a little um, caveat though is you want to avoid trying to convert, you know, high pixel based images into vector art. Um, you, you're going to start landing up with, you know, thousands of little pieces which you want to avoid. My recommendation is kind of choose things that have this basic outline where there's a, a logo and maybe just a full color where you can tweak in between. This technique is specific for objects like this where there's a logo, where there's a clean cut area, where there's, you know, this is, this is pixel based and we want to define this. So be selective about how you go about using this. But my goal is just to show you how to move an object like this into the online system and, and have it converted to vector and bring it back into Affinity Designer. So this is a job that I had from a client. They wanted this to be vectorized. Uh, they just had the pixel based image. So the technique requires that this be converted to monochrome, which is black and white. And then the second thing is if there's different colors and they are crossing each other, you've got to indicate, you've got to kind of separate them uh, in, in a way that I'll show you now so that when you finish with the vectorizing you don't have the color that bleeds from one area and if you want to drop a color in here it's going to bleed to the other area. Okay so it's a kind of two-step process. So let me show you the first one. We go to the adjustment layer and then we go to threshold. What threshold is going to do is literally turn it into just a monochrome setup. Okay so we have it like this and the reason why we only have one here is because the threshold wasn't met for the other one it was too light so we've got to make a little adjustment if we slide here you'll see it pops back so once it hits past that specific threshold it will either go black or either go white so this is what we what we want we actually will be happy with this um, again you see this area is touching and this area is touching in here so we at this stage now I'm happy with the fact that we have a, a definitive outline if you want to tweak and maybe take it further like if we if we look on top here you might see it's a little artifact so we can push it a little bit till we get as clean an object as we we require without if you go a bit too far it's going to go totally black okay if you push it over there it just pops totally black so find the the good position where you have a reasonable amount of clarity with it now we can close that now the next thing is we're going to indicate that this must be a split of here and the easiest way is just to put a stroke in here and have it a white stroke. So I'm going to go to the pen tool, choose my color to be white and no full. Okay, and maybe the stroke, let's just do it uh, about one pixel. Let's see what happens. So I'm going to click once here and click once here. And I'm just dropping that in, maybe make it a little bit thicker. Okay, and then I press A to get the No tool. So I can click closer here and close here, but this is the way I do it. It just works nicer so I can get a bit of curve also. So I press A to get the No tool and then I can just tweak it there. If I click off there, there I've separated it. And that's all I want because I want the vector uh, program to detect that there's a, a separation there. Okay, same thing over here. I'm going to do it here. Um, let me go in and click here. I'm going to just click on the move tool and click here because sometimes if I just go straight to the pen tool it, it still reads the previous selection I had. So I'll go here again and right here. Okay, And there we pretty much got what we're looking for as a, a nice sort of area. If I want to create a curve um, 
you know, you can decide to maybe pull it out that way and then press A for the No tool and get a, a little bit of curve. So all I'm doing is putting a stroke in there because when I export it, it will export it as a white space. Okay, and then the last one I need to get is there. So I'm going to just click, click back on the object in there. And yeah, it's just one click. And I think I'll be happy with that. Okay, so revise again. We've done a threshold a adjustment layer to get this to the black and white. I've looked where the areas overlap that I want to keep defined independently. I just place a single white area there and that will give me the object. So now I'm going to export. So let's export this and I'm just going to export as a PNG and call this one, two, three. Um, and let's save that. Now this is the program that I'm, I use. It's called onlineconverting.com. Let me just remove the vectorize and show you what it looks like when you rock up on it. So this is a free online converter. Its engine is built on an open source uh, pixel to rasterize program. So it's actually quite powerful. I'm talking about the vector part of it. It's got a whole lot of other conversion features which I haven't used. I'm just interested in the vectorize. So if you click vectorize, um, you drop the image here, but let me just scroll down here is what it can be converted to. I choose SVG that's compatible with bringing it into the Affinity Designer. And then if automatic start is not checked, you, you will have to manually click it or you can just click there. So it will convert automatically to SVG. <clears throat> There's some nice reading here for you to go through and educate yourself. But here you see they're referring to the convert rasterize to vector image using the utility Pottrace. Okay, Pottrace is a open source piece of software. And if you click on that, you can go to the Pottrace and go read up about it. Um, at the output, you will get a black and white image. That's why I'm, I'm referencing that you convert it to black and white beforehand, put it into this program, and when you get it out, you can add the color again. Yes, essential if I haven't used this one yet, but if you need a color vector image, then you can use this one. If you, if you click onto this one, let me show you what it looks like. It's got the same interface there, but it's got a lot of other settings where you can go tweak it. So you can experiment with it. I, I didn't find a need for this. Um, the client's work that I require just needed what I showed you up until now. So let's go in and I'm going to add, let's go into, it's one, two, three, I think the file name, there we go. So there's the original that I worked on and that's the one converted to using the threshold and separating those little items. So as you bring it in here, it's doing the conversion and that's it. So I'm going to now click, let me just clear this bottom. I'm going to click download. There we have, you see I've done a previous one, so it's still in there. So I'm going to just open that. So this one I am, let me just see if there's anything. Okay, I need to, this is the, the one that I was busy editing, the pixel one. I'm going to just close it, else it will drop right onto that same object. So I'm going to take this and drag it and just hover over there and drop it here. And there we go. Beautiful vector image. Isn't that incredible? And that's a, a quick, and now you notice there, there's that nice split there. There's a split there and a split there. So in this case, now I can go in and let me just uh, place onto this because I need that reference colors. So I'm going to take this and just place it and just make a little small one here so I can reference the colors. Then I'll choose this and go in there and click this color. Okay. And then let me just move this across. Do the same. Click that. Go and reference that color. Okay. Then I'm going to delete this. Okay, there, there we got it. Nice separation, nice sharp edges. This is the one part that we probably have to modify. If I go, I press A. A is just to switch it over to uh, node editing. I can select that area and just drag those three across. It's going... Okay, so if I maybe want to tweak this one here, I could possibly just pull it out and do a bit of a smoothing tweak or whatever we need on that one. Okay, but the point taken is now they have got a logo quickly and sorted out. And of course, this is a, um, the outline there. I can just draw a, a simple circle, which if we do that, 
flip that across there and we can get our things aligned okay which I'm not going to spend time on doing that now but it's pretty much how it go about it keep that area okay so that's how the conversion takes place I think using this program for people who want to do that conversion this is an excellent tool I'd probably spend some time in the future looking at this tracing with colors in and see how best we can use it but for purposes as I explained it now I'm sure this will be able to get you to do these basic logos and have them up and running soon so this is a totally free online conversion system and I'd suggest you get to use it and experiment with it find out what works best for you so have a fantastic day and God bless